We don't need no stinking budget. Oh, no. Well, you buy a hat like this, I'll bet you get a free bowl of soup, huh? I'm not wearing hockey pants. I'm gonna make him an offer, Captain. You play ball like a girl! Leon's getting larger. Nothing but pure and simple old-fashioned communism. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Well, thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Welcome to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. And I'm DJ Just Tyler. And if you're wondering, hey, who's that distraught lesbian looking guy with a bad t-shirt and the bad sweatpants? Well, this is what I look like, guys. And in case you haven't seen this show or heard this show, it's our first live broadcast all over the TVs. Yay! He lives up to expectations. But no, I don't. No, okay, no. In case you don't know, mm -hmm. this is the show where we talk about movie news, movie reviews, and everything in between. So uh, look at the camera. But it, we gotta I always say you don't look at the camera. But don't look at the camera? You just sit on the TV and say, don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera? Don't look at the camera. Okay, well, uh, how was your week before we start? Um, it was rough. It was rough? How so? A lot of work. A lot of work? You mean that thing that literally every other adult our age does? Oh, I, I, I know. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. Well, I hate that, but, you know. I can sit and watch movies all day. I'd do it. Well, you know, that's that'd be awesome, but we don't get paid for that. It'd be cool if we did. But uh, moving on, before we get into our mm -hmm. topics for the day, we want to remember a great actor named John Hurt who uh, passed away over the weekend. Hellboy's dad. Hellboy's dad and uh, the wand master from Harry Potter. He was, he was in Snowpiercer, too. Um, he, he, he's just a great actor I all thought there's the a lot of stuff he was in, but I just can't name them right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's very underrated. Yes. He was very underrated. And in case you don't know who he was, he's a great actor. Look up his filmography, and it's a shame he died. But, uh, you know, John Hurt, thank you so much for all the great films, and we, uh, we loved your movies. And thank you for Hellboy. Thank you for Hellboy. Thank you for, uh, thank you for being the wand master. Thank you for giving Harry his first wand. So, uh, moving on, talking about untimely things, the Han Solo movie is now going right into production. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Chris and Lord, um, Chris, uh, Lord and Miller, right? Lord and Miller, that's the director. That's the picture that uh, oh, was posted is. on there by Chris Miller. And so I believe it was like a joke on there that was kind of like the Han shot first kind of thing. Uh, he, did, he did shoot first. Yeah, I, well, he did shoot first. But uh, overall, what do you think about the start filming I mean, like this? I really don't want to see this, to be honest. <laughs> it, it, I just feel like... You know, <laughs> A smuggler, a pirate, you know, you, 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 you... I mean, look at that. Look, I mean, they look so good different. next to each other. Like, I can see him being him. I, you know I, just, I, mean? I just don't want to say, I mean, I want his past to remain a mystery. Yeah. That's I mean, the best that's part about him. him you, you don't know where he's from, what Do he's we doing. really need to see him do the Kessel Run? Yeah. Like, do we need to see, see that? To me, that's one of the best parts of his character. You don't know where he comes from. All you know is that he won it, won it in a match and he can... The Kelsey run and I don't know parsecs. I don't remember. Uh, is it thirteen or fourteen parsecs? Par is parsecs time or distance? Time or distance? Are they both? I'm just kidding. I know what the answer is. I just want to see. Oh. But I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, as much as I love Star Wars, I just kind of don't want to see a Han Solo solo movie. Don't want to see it. Han Solo. Han like Solo solo. Han so. Ow! <laughs> mm. No, but um, yeah, this movie is very unnecessary. But if we're gonna have one each year. I'm, they got a good team doing it. I'm excited to see it. I'm going to go pay money to go see it. Heck, they could put out Jar Jar's Big Adventure, and I'm going to be like, maybe there's some cool stuff about Luke <laughs> Skywalker are, in there. You are not going to see that. You're movie. right. I would never go <laughs> you see, would that. Never see that. Movie. I would never go see that. No, but. Uh, How much somebody's watching be like, that is an amazing idea. It's am no, but that's the, that was the episode two. They actually gave Ahmed Best, the uh, guy that played um, Jar Jar, a script that said Jar Jar's Big Adventure, and this in the commentary too. But that's a whole uh, other thing. But uh, oh, yeah, Han Solo movie. Um, yeah, they got a great team doing it. They got a good actor. Woody Harrelson's going to be in it. Uh, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones is going to be in it. Uh, again, good team. Unnecessary as heck. Amelia Clark, who's going to play in it? I do. No casting rumors has come out. We just know Han Solo's in it. <laughs> how, how much is a twist? And because she's got pretty good range, she's going to play young, young, so like little kid solo. She's got range. <laughs> no, she's got range. Oh, come on, that's wonderful. Uh, no, but uh, yeah. Han Solo movie, um, mm. looks nice, hope it's good, uh, completely unnecessary, we don't need to see it, and also I like the casting of uh, 
Lando, uh, Donald Glover. I'm really excited yes, about that. Yes, I do. I'm I've seen pictures of him with a mustache. I'm very, very excited I'm to excited see that. For that. Yeah, I, 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 that's going to be the thing I'm looking forward to the most. I think we're going to have a really good performance out of him. But yeah, see, what I'm looking forward to is I want to see the gambling. You know, the I don't know how they game. Where they have put, put, space poker in that galaxy, or okay. is it so? Is that little chess game? Is yeah. that how he's going to win? I want to see but, that happen. Huh? Let's make a prediction real quick before we move on. Okay. Do you think that he's going to meet? Che like you're going to see his, him and Chewbacca's first meeting. And like you're just like my name's Chewbacca, and like oh, 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 oh. like it's gonna it's, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, no, I feel like he's gonna be like I don't know what you're talking about, and then he like takes classes and learns. It's like it's like the movie Love Actually. It's like Goodwill Hunting, but yeah, with Harrison Ford. Yeah, it's you know it's like where Colin, Colin Firth takes the classes to learn Portuguese, so you talk to that girl. No. It's like Han Solo is gonna buy like the space Rosetta Stone and learn space Rosetta Stone to learn like I don't know che Chewbacca speak. No, but. Um, it's probably going to be a really sad uh, cameo by Harrison Ford that he doesn't want to be there. Oh, but he, he actually he wanted to be uh, written out after the third movie. Yeah, I, he I wanted, know. He wanted his been character better. dead. They promised that his character was dead because he was sick of uh, of fans asking him about the movies when he's going to turn or anything. Yeah. But he, he uh, spoiler alert, he's dead in the movies, and you know hopefully not his career. But Han Solo movie. Uh, yeah, take it how you will. Let us know what you guys think at bbrrequest at nashgc.edu if you want to tell us anything about it. Well, Mike, we might talk about it next week on the show. Who knows? I will not check it. He probably will. I probably will. No, but moving on, uh, talking about things that Disney uh, <laughs> is Ooh. shooting out like rockets. Uh, Beauty and the Beast live action movie just got a new trailer. Oh, the new trailer. The yes. new trailer. The new trailer. I'm looking forward to this one. Okay. So before we go on, we're going to play the trailer in case you guys haven't seen it. So uh, sit back and enjoy. My dear Belle, you're so ahead of your time. This is a small village. You are the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Nobody deserves you. And it's small-minded as well. But small also means safe. I will escape, I promise. Look, a girl. Who said that? Hello. <gasps> you can talk. Hello, of course. It's all he ever does. How lovely to make your acquaintance. Want to see me do a trick? What happens when the last petal falls? The Nastel remains a beast forever. And we become antiques. What did you do to it? Nothing. Get out of here! Go! You have to help me. You have to stand. If she is the one who'll break the spell, you must finally learn to love. Tell us all the stars. Have you really read every one of these books? No, <gasps> some of them are in Greek. True as it can be. I watched it. I want to see <laughs> yeah, it. I watched it too. I watched it. I want to see the movie. You want to see the movie? I, I, I'm a, a fan. You just of, saw the movie. That's basically everything that's in the movie. Well, I, I've seen the original. I mean, it, it, it's just going to be just like the animated one. It's okay. a remake. So, how close do you think they're going to stick to the original? Pretty close. It looked pretty close to pretty me. Pretty close. Do you think it's just going to be ex like beat for beat, or do you think it's going to be like they're going to take it in a new direction? Beat for beat. Beat for beat. I'm, I'm saying beat for beat too. It's just it, a live somewhat, action remake. Somewhat. They're going to throw some new stuff in there. Uh, the guy that's playing Gaston. Who's the actor that's playing Gaston? Do you know? Uh, Luke Evans. Luke Evans? Luke Evans. Luke Evans? You know who Luke Evans is? He's an actor. Yeah. Oh, the Hobbit movies. He was Dracula. He was... Oh, yeah. 
super popular. <laughs> no, but yeah. he, he looked pretty good. He's not as jacked as he is in the uh, like the animated movie, but I mean, it's kind of unrealistically jacked yeah, in that. Was, yeah. But I mean, overall, it looks really good. You know, and of course, as my friends say, CGI as a uh, beast. But I mean, everything looks pretty good. Josh Gad's in it. it but yeah, do tra- you think trailer gave away too much? Oh, not really, because everyone has seen this movie. Everyone has seen this everyone movie. Has, everyone it, has seen this it, movie. It, it's, probably, it's probably on ABC Family right now. It probably oh, is. Excuse me, Freeform. Freeform. I don't know, like the, the dress and everything, the dance, it, it looks really good. Everything's mm-hmm. good. Disney puts out very few bad products. We give them a pass for Cars too. I want Angela Lansbury in this movie. And now, uh, for those that are listening, who is Angela Lansbury? She was Miss Potts, and she sang the song in the original movie. Okay. Do you think uh, Emma Watson is going to be singing in this one? No. No? Whoever plays Miss Potts should be singing this movie. Miss Potts? I want Angela Lansbury. She's like 91, but I still want her in that movie. <laughs> I, want, she, I, want, I want her to have a cameo. She, she, you, murder Does it be like right? James Earl Jones in uh, Rogue One, where he just sounds <laughs> like he's like half dead? I know, because this is Angela Lansbury. She's going to be golden no matter how old she is, golden. man. Uh, well, speaking Me about and my mother love uh, Murder, She Wrote, so... Yeah, no, well, speaking about golden things that might not be as good as they seem, James Cameron has written Avatar 2 through 5 and has said he's ready Hold to put him into production. Hold on a minute, is that the little ball kid that shoots air and water and fire around? No, not that M. Night Shyamalan disgrace. Oh, no, no. No, <laughs> no um, yeah, this is the Avatar... As in James Cameron's 3D thing that made a lot of money. Oh, the, the back in 2009. Uh, Dances with aliens. Dance, Dances with aliens. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Dances with aliens. I know. Um, you well, see, have you seen Dances with Wolves? D- yeah, of course. It's like it's the exact same. It's the same movie. We get it. We're going to recycle. It is the same movie. It's James Cameron basically telling us all to recycle and the Earth's dying and blah 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 blah. Blue people. CG. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. But um, Dances yeah. Dances with Smurfs. I don't know if I'm too excited about this. I mean, I, I'm pretty excited about it. I mean. Will it live up to the reputation the first one left? The first one, I mean, story-wise, isn't that great? It's a spectacle. It's like it's it's all visuals. I mean, I mean it's like going to the, the circus, which th- that's not around anymore. But still, yeah. uh, rest in peace, Wrigley's. Wrigley's. Wait, that, they make gum. Oh, well, like the, Wrigley the, Brothers of Barnum yeah. and Bailey. Oh, what, whatever. Okay, well, that's Gosh, not the point. Gosh, Isaac. That's Golly, not, boy. That's not that's not the point. Avatar two. Do we need five of these? <laughs> Do I we need, need, five. need five of these? If, if each one could pull out two billion, then they're probably going to need five of them. I put the wrong buzzer, but yeah, it's, you're totally right. Like it's it's made for money. It's like he wants to push the boundaries of cinema, but really he's just pushing like all these stories he's out. Just raising the, the bar. I think he's waited a little bit too long. I, th- I think they're going to come out a little bit too late because back in 2009, that was like the first 3D kind of you know spectacle thing. We see 3D movies every now and then, you know, like but we see 3D movies like all the time now. Like it's out there every single week. He reinvented that and pretty much CGI work. Yeah, I mean you kinda what what's new in a film. He raised the bar. He raised the bar literally South Park the, joke, he raised the like bar. A, like when he got done getting down to the depths of the ocean, he started writing these films again. James Cameron's gonna raise the bar. Okay. I'm raising the bar. Before we move on, how long do you think it's gonna take us to get these movies like out into the theaters? I would probably say the next 10, 15 years. I'm saying the next five years we're gonna get Avatar two. And then oh dang! I'm I'm saying it's gonna be a long time. Ooh. I mean, we waited like so long. Anyway, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty. 2008, one, uh, 2009. 2009, 2009. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if Sam Worthington and Sigourney Weaver is gonna be back as as Zoe Saldana, but uh, yeah, I'm saying it's like four or five years at least. Maybe if we're still doing the show four or five years now, we'll we'll see. But uh, yeah. Speaking about things that we're questioning and you know we're not too excited about, Ben Affleck has been uh, dropped out. Uh, it's directing the new Batman film. Oh no! Oh no! Just put seeing him behind that camera looks so natural. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, is, is that Argo or Batman? That's got to be Argo. I don't know. This, you know, you, Argo you know, was this, a good movie. Argo was. Good. Oh yeah, but to say that's Daredevil. <laughs> that's Daredevil. Oh man. Oh, oh no. That's ter- oh. oh. Man. Remember Daredevil, guys? Yeah. Not not the good. Oh, Netflix there's Zack show. Snyder. Oh no, we got. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got a buzzer. It's a Zack Snyder buzzer. Okay, go ahead. If you don't know, it's, it's too happy of a song to play for such a drab movie. It's like the complete opposite of that. Yeah, so you're trying to talk about Zack Snyder. Every time you go on a rant, I'm going to hit that button. I'm not going on a rant. I'm sure he's a you're nice go, guy. You're gonna I didn't like Batman v Superman. That's it. You're I don't like Man of Steel either. Don't rant. Stop you ranting right now. You're okay. ranting. Okay, no. But I'm a little upset about this, man. i got to be honest. Um, what do you got to say about it? Um, maybe he could like get uh, another perspective in there, do co-directing or... You know, maybe, I don't know, Ridley Scott in there. Ridley Scott, I don't know. 
But we're going to take a quick commercial break real quick. When we come back, we're going to be talking more about this and go into a little segment that might tie into it. And Stay I with us. More hey, sports fans, we'll remind you guys, tune in every Friday at 3.30 p.m. with Sports with Lou on WNIA Big Bang Radio. Sports with Lou. We'll be breaking down all professional sporting events and all your local high school sporting events going around the Tri-Area. Don't forget, tune in every Friday at 3.30 p.m. And if we go into overtime, everybody's a winner with Sports with Lou. 3.30 p.m. WNIA Big Bang Radio. Ready, set, hey! What's up? It's DJ Twiz. Be sure to tune in with me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. on WNIA 89.1 FM to catch all your urban music, news, fashion news, and sports every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Make sure you tune in because it will be lit. thousand dollars go to a third world country i know it's crazy man <laughs> yeah no guys we're back with big bang cinema um right before we went to the break we talked about ben affleck dropping out as the director of the new batman film mm -hmm. so um which begs the question, who do we want to see direct this film? I want to see Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott? I haven't seen enough Ridley Scott movies lately. I mean, he's coming out with a new Alien oh, film. Excuse me, good ones. I'm sorry. Ones. I'm going to say Darren Aronofsky. I'm really, uh, I like um, Darren Aronofsky or um, Dar David Fincher. I think David Fincher more so than Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, everybody should say David Fincher. David Fincher. David, David Fincher's going to be great for that. No, but uh, since he you dropped know, out. Pause it. You know who? Perfect idea. Someone who loves the material used to write the material too. What? Silent Bob. Silent Bob. No. But uh, this leads into the, uh, the question, what other major directors have dropped out of big movies? Which brings us to this week's segment, which is... Yeah. Director Dropout. Come on, Kevin Smith. Perfect directing that movie. No. This is going to be a segment where we're talking about uh, directors that have dropped mm. out of big name productions at the last minute and had to be replaced. Let's hear the quiz you made for me today. All right, I so, number one. This yes. is going to be the first one. All right, I'm ready. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start you out easy. Okay. All right. The, uh, the movie is The Hobbit, and the director that was attached was Guillermo del Toro. Uh, true. True? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. He was attached. You know why he dropped out? Hellboy 3. Pacific Rim. Oh. Yep, and they put Peter Jackson in, and even <coughs> Peter Jackson admits he was winging that movie. Yeah. All those movies, the three I mean, movies for well, some reason. I mean, the hot, you got three movies out of, out of one book. Yeah. Okay, so you ready for this next one? Yes. Tying it back in. Uh, movie, Mission Impossible 3, director, David Fincher. True. True? Hey, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, yeah, I have no idea why he dropped out of this one, but uh, yeah, he dropped out. Dropped I, out. I would love to see that, though. Um, this is J.J. Abrams' first film that he ever directed, which uh, I, I love Mission Impossible 3. It's one of my favorite of the, uh, of the bunch. I like J.J. Abrams' movies. So, okay. So, movie, Quantum of Solace. Director, Damien Chazelle of Whiplash. False. False. Hey, you got yeah. that one right. No, in reality, uh, this is, there's a director named Roger Miller. I don't know if you know him, but he's, uh, he's done um, movies like Morning Glory and stuff. Oh, he, he's, he's being Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah? I think so. <laughs> that's, that's Roger Waters. Yeah, whatever. All right. You're doing pretty good so far. This almost yes. never happens, by the way, if you don't yeah, listen don't, to the I'm show. Really good, he usually gets them all wrong. Okay. okay. Right, he buzzes them. I got them right anyway. Okay, here's the movie. The movie is Thor, The Dark World. The director, uh, Patty Jenkins from uh, the woman that's doing Wonder Woman. False. False. Ooh, I'm sorry, oh. buddy. That's what, that one's true. Oh, that was true. Patty Jenkins was attached to Thor, The Dark World. I'm not sure exactly why she pulled out, 
But uh, it says right here, it's creative differences. Why don't you give him a tour to do the next Thor movie? I, I don't know. He's too busy making Pacific Rim 2 at the time oh, right now. Oh, no, not that. You don't want to see Pacific Rim 2? Not really. I really want to see it. Okay, so here's the next one. You ready? It's always sunny in Japan. That's what I'm about okay. to The Wolverine. Yeah. The director, uh, let's tie it back into what we just talked about, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, of uh, what was the movie? Uh, Jared Leto movie. Oh, when he d when he dies in. <laughs> no, no, no. The, uh, the hair one. The hair one one. I can't think of the name. Oh, 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 oh! Requiem for a Dream. Re Requiem for a Dream. I don't know. Oh, it's hilarious. I talk about the movie all the time. Yeah. Oh my god. He's the director of Requiem for the Dream. He was going to direct the uh, Wolverine. False. False. I'm sorry, but he was attached. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, he was attached. And you know why he dropped out? Because it was too good a movie to do for him. Okay. Um, well, it would keep him out of the country for a long time. I don't think he was comfortable for doing that, for leaving his family. Yeah, I think the whole thing was filmed in Japan. Yeah, okay. So I was, uh, I would love to see that, actually, because the Wolverine was okay. Darren Oscar directed it. He's such a visual guy. That was mm -hmm. such great. But we're going to get, a, hopefully, a good Logan movie soon. But uh, what, last one, okay? Okay. You ready? Yes. So the movie, Schindler's List. The director, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Oh man, oh, um, false. False. That's true, you know who was attached? Steven Spielberg. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, I'm just, no. <laughs> Can you imagine the Mel Gibson directed Schindler's List? Terrible. <laughs> it would not be accurate. Not Let's put it that way. Not accurate. All right, guys, thank you so much. That was Director Dropout. Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching us so far. Again, if you have any segments or anything you want us to talk about, email us at bbrrequests at nashcc.edu. Well, uh, maybe you'll see yourself on the air. Maybe six people will see you around campus. Who knows? Uh, but you anyway, your phone number too so they can call you. I don't know about all that. Talk to us no. live. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to see a movie that, uh, that we're not too happy to review. Spoiler alert. Um, what movie is it? It's going to be Resident Evil, the oh. final chapter. Oh, I think Stay I with us real quick. Movie. Big Bang Cinema will be right back. I, I think I saw that. We did it water, we did it woo. We did it water woo. Hello, my name is Stuart the Nighthawk Hawkins, and I'm a DJ here at Nash Community College's Big Bang Radio. So tune in Mondays and Thursdays from 8 to 10 for the wind down. Smooth jazz geared to help you relax from your busy day. And that's how I got that parking spot. That's just me. <laughs> oh, guys, welcome back to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. And I'm DJ Just Tyler. So uh, right now, we're going to go into the movie review of the week. Mm. So this movie, uh, this movie, what, do we, uh, what movie are we talking about? I think it's Resident Evil Final the Chapter. The Final Chapter. Final Thank Chapter. Thank God. Okay, so if you don't know Resident Evil, maybe this is the fifth or sixth or seventh movie in the franchise. I want to say seventh. This movie has definitely came out in January, but in case you haven't heard about it or seen anything about it, here's a real quick trailer. Mm. My name is Alice. Running. Killing.
This has been my whole life. We're here today to talk about our destiny. We're here to talk about the end of the world. Everything has led to this. We can't run anymore. Addis, in 48 hours, humanity will be no more. There is a way to end all this. Why should I trust you? I can offer you something you want very much. Revenge. Umbrella developed a cure. An airborne antivirus. I have to get to the hive. It's our only chance now. There's something coming. There's something big. Oh my god. There's an army of them in our way. What are we gonna do? We're gonna kill every last one of them. Two objects collide. No one will survive. Let's go. I should have killed you in Washington. Yeah, big mistake. All this could end. Alice! I'm gonna stop Umbrella. Whatever it takes. Something's stalking us. Are you sure? This is what I do. Run. I think that's pretty accurate what we just saw, huh? Yeah, it was a tough movie. Okay, so, in case you don't know, Resident Evil, the final chapter is about a girl named Alice Miko, uh, Mila Djokovic, who's uh, married to the director of this film, uh, going on some journey that's full of shaky cam and bad lighting. So, uh, Tyler, what did you think about this film? Well, I had a hard time seeing it. Yeah. I felt like uh, I felt this was a joint production between Michael J. Fox and Stevie Wonder, you know, Michael J. Fox held the oh, camera yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, like this. Why would you say that? Because Let's leave it up to the audience. It was super shaky. Okay, no. Super shaky, I, I couldn't see anything. I, I told you earlier that I think Chris Brown uh, did the cinematography and the sound design for this because I've never felt so assaulted watching a film. Zing! It's bad, oh, oh my gosh. No, well, yeah. I, I didn't throw Stevie Wonder in there yet. It was so dark, the lighting was oh, so terrible. That's not about that. I not know about a blind man must have been Not about, about that. It. No, no. <laughs> That's the one sound effect I like going to. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, this movie was terrible. Mm. <laughs> this movie Dialogue was Dialogue was bad. Dialogue was bad. Let's start from the beginning. And okay? it, was it was like, it broke uh, narrative with a lot of the other films. I have never, like, see, we come from a different perspective on this. You played the video games and seen the films. I've done neither. I've seen the first one. And the first one I thought was not that great. You should go to my house. I got the new one. Uh, I got, dude, the new one is I don't, amazing. I don't want to waste, waste my time with that. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I, well, there's some things, like, this movie begins like a video game. It's, like, all voiceover, which, like, they must have missed the first day of screenwriting school because, like, that's, like, just a no-no. Mm -hmm. No, in the first, like, five minutes, like, I'm, this is I not really forgot. spoilers at this point, but uh, yes. we, will be, we will be going into spoilers a little bit later, but we will have a banner up. So right now, uh, perfectly that's fine. Cool. But the beginning of the movie is just kind of like a stoic woman walking around a wasteland, and there's no dialogue. We're, like... 15 minutes, and it's just bad jump scares and like really loud sound design to the point where like I had to literally stop looking at the screen, look down, cover my ears, and rub my temples because like within the first 20 minutes, like I had a headache. Yeah. In this movie. Super shaky, loud, flashy lights. And yeah. I'm just glad I wasn't epileptic because I would have been like, kicking all of that floor. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> I'm going to give you a wrong buzzer because that wasn't only incorrect, that was politically incorrect. That was a devil. Devil. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, there you go. There's two. No, but uh, for real, this, um, the whole shaky cam thing, it could be used really well, mm -hmm. like in the Bourne movies. Um, I think that Paul Greengrass uses that to a good extent. <laughs> Paul not necessarily, Greengrass. yeah, Paul Greengrass. Uh, not in uh, the most recent Jason Bourne. That yeah. I feel like the same cinematographer worked on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris Brown's getting around and work, man. Oh, that no, was but, so uh, bad. No, but. This mm. one, it felt like it was just there to mask, 
bad stunt work and bad effects. Mm, bad because effects. mostly like it this isn't really spoiling anything. It's just here's the anatomy of a scene in the Resident Evil movie from what I've seen in this one. Alice walks around somewhere and it gets real quiet and then like it just super super loud noise go bah! and then it's some you know kind of bad costume they have and the camera goes like this and she fights it and then the thing falls down and you can't see anything and they don't really have to think about the stunt work they don't really have to find any cool chore <laughs> yeah. uh, choreo uh, choreography they don't oh have to do any God. cool written ways oh, no yeah. she just shoots it yeah and, and that's it's it. over and it was like I mean and now she's finding a giant caterpillar thing that you can't see and then it's like the you know, the the the, the, uh, the chase scene I, I could not see what was going on. It got, I got because uh, they had the whole supporting cast. I was like, you know, somebody died. Who who died? I didn't get to see any of it. We didn't care about any of them. Yeah. They but, were, uh, by the way, they no. did terrible jobs. So they were horrendous actors. Yeah. Acting. But the, there's some supporting cast in this that really doesn't matter at all. Um, yeah, fodder, I call them. Fodder. Yeah. Well, there there they're was fodder. Specific, this they is, were fodder. Okay, we can go ahead and put spoilers up at this point. So there's uh, we're gonna spoiler warning. Uh, we are gonna spoil the heck out of this movie, but you know. Um, it, the movie's not very good. Don't see it. But uh, <laughs> no. So there's a part in this movie where mm -hmm. Alice, the main character, Mila Djokovic, is going to uh, the Umbrella Corporation's underground headquarters. And before she gets there, there's this tower in Raccoon City that's been taken over by like refugees and the survivors. Mm -hmm. And there's two instances, oh, and like two or three, yeah. um, where these characters. All pull guns on each other, like it's like you shut up, you shut up, you shut up, and it's like five an guys instant, around a corner. It was like an instant Mexican standoff. Yeah, it was like that, but it was it, this happened like three times during yeah. this, like in the same like scene after scene, and all the while there was like this little eight year old kid with a gun in the background that like looks like he wandered on the set, like this in the background. Yeah. It made me I, I literally laughed out in the theater, and there's like a whole group behind me going like, oh yeah. Oh, oh, it's awesome. Super, super awesome. Look at the explosion. Like, they, oh, they were, like, super into it. Oh, I know, man. And I'm like, I, I literally, I couldn't stop laughing at this point. And they say something in there that's like, we can't leave our fortress because we have all the elderly and the children that we have to take care of. It's like, we're the only protectors of this place. And ten minutes later, uh, Alice is like, I'm going to leave now. And everyone's like, we will join you. And they just leave. <laughs> yeah, they just leave. There. It's they like left them there. They just forget completely about all those. I'm like, I literally... I'm like, wait, what happened? Like, didn't you say there was like a bunch of people here you had to protect? Mm. It made no sense. It's like the script forgot about it. And the script forgets a lot about a lot of stuff. And the dialogue is really poor. Oh, bad dialogue. Uh, it was like, you were the guy who's like, she's, he's like, how did you know it was me? Because you're the only one that's left alive. I was like, bad. No, it, it, was, it was worse than that. It you're was like, still alive. It's like, it's like, you're the only one that's not dead quite yet. And it was just it was something oh, yeah, like it was that. Bad, bad dialogue. And there was one scene where like they reversed the fan because like they could try to blow into there and like and it's a tension filled scene that gave me a headache. Oh, the little beaver chick got ground up in it, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but so Alice sad. says he's like it's reversed its polarity. It's sucking us in. It's going now. Like they'll say things like that, and it just it drove me nuts. Mm. It just drove me so nuts. And uh, the end of this film. Um, no, was that, 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 oh, that's it. We, we skipped a whole lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, skipped a whole lot. Yeah, okay. the chasing, the dog chasing, and that was my favorite part. The dog chasing? Because I had no idea what was going on, what was that's chasing That's the whole movie them. for me. And it was, I was like, what's chasing them? Like, you hear like people screaming. I was like, who got eaten? Who got killed? And got, and Does it matter? They regrouped. I was like, who's missing? I, 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 don't even, I, I didn't even care about it. Well, it was so the, the guy with the eaten. beard and the guy with the... The do rag and, and the guy, the guy who started the Mexican standoffs. They they all started the Mexican standoffs, man. Yeah, that was terrible. What the little eight year old child was left behind to die. I swear it was like pitch black. That whole scene was almost pitch black. And it was lit by gunfire, yeah. and it, it, that was probably the most headache inducing scene. There's a lot of them in this. And it was like this. A lot run, of them. It was like ten minutes of running and doing this. And some terrible CGI monster they were hiding in the dark. Like, get, get, get Michael J. Fox out here. Hold, hold the camera. <laughs> He's like this. Trying to film it. Just terrible. That was some of the worst. Some of the worst, I would have to say. I don't know. What gaffer? Gaffer? What does a gaffer do? Uh, I think he, he runs the lights. Like, he, he Terrible. Lights. Terrible job. That was terrible lighting. Terrible. There was no lighting. Exactly. It's terrible. And also, the plot was just so confusing. It's convoluted. Like, so, from my understanding, the plot was Alice is uh, recruited by this robot creature that it was the... Um, Red Queen. Yeah, the Red Queen. From the first one. From the fir yeah, okay, so from the first one, who was like recreated from um, the guy that helped start the Umbrella Corporation's daughter, and he injected the T-virus Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Oh, we already said that. 
No, let's say, spoiler alert, the computer, Alice and the old woman are all the same person. But that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I guess that from a mile away, and they just don't set that up. Like, well, Alice is like a set of, up, she's a clone, apparently, of uh, the daughter that was injected with the T-virus. So here's my biggest question about that. Because, you know, she was real sick in the movie, and, and, uh, and she's still in a wheelchair. She had progeria. How come when they ejected the exact clone, they ejected one clone, one clone got super strong, psychic powers, flying, making things explode with her mind? I don't know, man. And the girl in the woman in the wheelchair was still in a wheelchair. How was that possible? Do you think they put possible? thought into this? Absolutely not. And then the whole thing about getting the virus. They had an you know, antivirus. They had an antivirus in the first three movies. They, uh, they, they, she, well, she held it multiple times that, in the movie. Well, another question. Why do they even make an antivirus to begin with? That's the whole plot like, of it. Yeah, well, like, no, what? Why? It doesn't make any sense. No. If you want to just take over the world, why would you create an antivirus to just get rid of all that? Because they, they want to go back and take... They, they don't want to get bitten by zombies when they go back on the surface. But why would you tell everybody, anybody about that? You tell your biggest like enemy about that. The robot told the biggest enemy about it. Where are we at in this movie? I have no idea. <laughs> no, okay, so... The, the computer uh, told her. Around the end time is when it was revealed that um, the daughter was still alive. She was one of the heads of the Umbrella Corporation, and the guy, uh, the main guy, uh, what Jor El from the uh, Game of Thrones. Yes, the guy with all the crosses around. Uh, think they had enough crosses? Well, he was a clone. He was a clone. He's a clone. And there was like four clones of him that uh, supposedly was around. And apparently, that one in there was like a robot clone. I think. Uh, no, it was. I think what it was. was he, the original guy went to sleep because you know, he's like all the minions will take care of it. So he put le left out clones. It's confusing. <laughs> Very confusing. I, I don't know. And it was the guy, the, uh, the one that looks like a mannequin. Um, the guy West with the shades. It's Wesker. We Wesker. This one I was saying, Wesker, the, uh, uh, you know, the previous movies, this guy was like bulletproof. He would heal back from anything. He was super fast. Got the stuff coming strong. out of his mouth like yeah, that. All that. Yeah. And then he, then a door fell on his leg and he died. And I was just like, <laughs> I how did that happen? Well, he also they got shot him in the head multiple times. He just spit the bullets well, out of his head. He also got blown up in an explosion. Yeah. Still survived that. Died, died, died because, yeah, he, he, they put an atom bomb in his plane and he just imploded and he survived from it. And then, then he, a door falls on his leg and he's dead. A door falls on Wesker's a, leg. A door and he falls on him. I mean, he's in the games. This guy is like the, the biggest, the biggest paid like side villain. villain. That is, he's so annoying because you just can't kill him. How, door falls on his how leg. How about them groundbreaking effects near the like the, at the beginning of the movie? The effects didn't look that bad. I mean, I thought like for such a schlocky movie as Resident Evil, like the effects didn't look that bad. Oh, dude, they had a budget cut from the last one. Oh, really? Yeah, the one before the special effects were really good. Uh, I mean, I about to say, I'm like, I didn't expect them to be that good because I've seen clips of other ones. I'm like, that's really, really bad. Well, you know, that, those were dated too. Yeah. But um, um, there was a scene uh, where the zombie horde was coming behind the uh, the big tanker thing. Yeah, they and they were like running. having the people chase it. It, it looked really bad. This part where the the jump scare went bah! with the zombie. I hate that. It's such a cheap way to scare someone. If you're gonna scare someone, do it well, like a smart, clever way. Just don't like because it's a natural body reaction. It's kind of like if you eat something bad, you're gonna throw up. If you reduce the volume down and peak it back up to where it's like clipping the track and something appears on the screen super fast, it's a natural body reaction to go oh, mm. oh, but you know. But that's not really legit scary. It's such a cheap and stupid way to scare someone. Mm. But the like, I just don't like that. It's no stupid. No terror in it. No terror. No terror. you got to have something legit have suspenseful. You have, like, Insidious. Those are so scary. Yeah, exactly. But um, man, do, it, do you think it's going to take any cues from any good movies, man? This, These movies are, like, not... Like, they're bottom... This January movie. This movie okay. perfectly encompasses what January is to movies. I'm about to tell you something that's going to blow your mind right now. That's It was one of the greatest... Video game movies ever made, and that's extremely, that's not saying much, dude. That is not saying much because they are usually terrible video game. They're movies. almost always. T tell me one good super. Uh, well, no, uh, tell me one good uh, video game movie. Assassin's Creed. Really? Yeah, that was like probably the best. Really? Gen genre's got to offer. Ooh, I don't know. Terrible. I think we might have to degree, uh, disagree on that, man. Probably the best the genre has to offer. <laughs> that's not very good. Mm. It's scraping the bottle of the barrel. But January is the movie, is what Nickelback is the music. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Mm. Oof. That was just a little bit. Sorry to all the Canadian viewers out there. All the Canadian viewers. Guys, I, I, if you like Nickelback, please, you know, you might like this movie. They're I'm a national scared. treasure.
The National Treasure. Well, yeah. let's be on the point. Yeah. Resident Evil, I haven't seen. Are the other ones like this movie? Kind of, but not like. Are quite. they better or worse? Let, let me put it this way. This one was the worst movie in the bunch. For real? Yeah. So the other ones are like better than this. First one was good. First one, I disagree with you on that. First one was good. I love the first one. Second one got like they had a budget cut and it was like they spent all the money on the Nemesis costume, and then like they just kind of like just threw in like like, like Power Ranger sound effects. <laughs> I know. I saw one scene. Uh, I think it was in the third or the oh. fourth one where Alice Lear like kicks a piece of glass into a, like one of those zombie dogs. Yeah. And it was like that was the funniest scene. Yep. Yeah, no. uh, but uh, overall, I kind of thought this movie was uh, sucky, and I didn't like it at all. But um, I'm going to give this movie a 2 out of 10, in case you care about my scoring. Uh, we get things 1 out of 10. This one's a 2 out of 10. It's the bottom of the barrel. Um, yeah, I'm glad they're not making any more of these. I give it a 4 out of 10, which means a 1 out of 5. Okay. 4 out of 10. <laughs> That's a little high for this. 4 out of That's 10. That's what I gave Batman v Superman, dude. 4 out of 10. Yeah, four out of ten. That's a little high. That for is this. not high. That is low. Uh, pff, but what would you? What would go lower than that before we go on the break? Oh, uh, the room. The room. Well, I mean that. Tommy Wise said movies. <sighs> Enough about that. So but guys, again, Wiseau. tell us what you think about this movie at bbrrequest at nashc.edu. If you're listening on the radio, uh, if you're watching us on campus, uh, if you're uh, watching us on YouTube, watching us on Facebook, please let us know. Let us know what you want us to talk about. But when we come back after this break, we're going to be talking about the first Resident Evil movie show the trailer. We're also going to be talking about some cool facts about it. Stay with oh, yeah. us. Big Bang Cinema will be right back. In a world where some things are beyond legend, they will search for answers. Be prepared. Hang on to your seats. They are going where no one has gone before. Until now. Why are you so close to me? I don't know. Let me back up a little bit. Yo, check out our show on no. Big Bang Radio. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, this is Mike D, inviting you to join me for Ultimate Alternative, Fridays at 2 on Big Bang Radio, or anytime on the Ultimate Alternative Podcast. Oh, that's another show on the network. Guys, we're back with Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. And I'm still G -J DJ G -J Justin. G -J. G -J. G -J. I'm just G -J. Tyler. I'm just Tyler. G -J. Just call me Tyler. I'm DJ. I'm just Tyler. <laughs> no. Right. No, I'm just Tyler. Just so we're back. Tyler. We're back. We just talked about Resident Evil, the final chapter, which made our heads hurt, and yeah. so uh, made us go back, which is our vintage movie throwback of the oh, week. Give me uh, some headache. old facts uh, about Resident Evil, the first one. Oh. I, I guess it's just called Resident Evil, right? Resident Evil. Okay. So before we go on, we're gonna show the trailer. Let's show us back to a couple years back. 2002, I think. Yeah. 2000, no, 2001. Yeah. 2001. 2001. Thank you. Deep underground, in a top secret research lab, security has been breached. A deadly virus, capable of contaminating the entire world, has been released by Umbrella Corporation. Oh my god. We have to get out of this building! Who is that? It's the break! <laughs> It's okay, we're here to help. Now, an elite team has been sent in to stop it. Five hours ago, we had Greenman homicide. 
Who's the Red Queen? State-of-the-art artificial intelligence. The corporation's keeping a few secrets down here. Something you're not supposed to see. But they have only three hours left before it begins infecting and mutating the whole human race. Everyone stay calm. What's that? Bindi, man! She took a chunk clean right out of me! You have to get out. Don't listen to anything she says. She's a holographic representation of the Red Queen. She may be our only way out of here. Why is she still standing? She isn't standing now. No one is immune. Resident Evil. You're all going to die down here. Oh, that was the trailer from 2002, wasn't it? Did that say Gila Movovich? Gila Movovich? I feel like it said Gila Bovovich. I'm not, I'm not, I think they, they got the name mixed no. up. Apparently we're making a Mila joke of it. Uh. Oh. No. But, yeah, Resident Evil 1. Um, I gotta rewatch this. I haven't watched this in a long time. I wasn't a huge fan of it the first time I saw it. it I thought it was silly. One. I liked it. Uh, it's hard to make a good, su uh, well, not superhero, um, video game movie. It's really, really hard, but tell us some facts about it. 2002. Okay, <laughs> what else? That's when it came out. I've okay. seen it. And um, at, during the filming, Mila Jovovich actually married the director. Look at that poster. And they took out her nude scene. Look at that out poster. Of it. Yeah. Can't you just hear the techno music over that and bad CG? Yeah, she had, <laughs> she had nude scenes in it, and they actually took it after they got married. Oh, yeah? Yeah, took it right out of the movie. Oh, wow. And uh, another fun fact about that whole movie right there mm -hmm. is that it was based off of Alice in Wonderland. Based off the video game or the movie? The movie, not the game. Okay. Alice in Wonderland, Alice, the villain was the Red Queen, and the liquid was supposed to be like the, uh, the um, oh, no, the, the, uh, the ban Bandersnatch, no, Jabberwocky, no, Bandersnatch, Bandersnatch, that's the, the giant other one that worked with the Red Queen, right? I don't know, it's been a while. Am I right? Bandersnatch? I have Gosh. no idea. I'm just going to say you're wrong because it's funny. But, um, oh. Yeah, and uh, so that was a pretty fun fact about Alice in Wonderland. And uh, Paul, uh, he, uh, Anderson. Paul W.S. Anderson. Paul W.S. Anderson. Not Paul, uh, not Paul S. Anderson. Paul W.S. Anderson. Not There Will Be Blood, uh, Boogie Nights, Paul Anderson. Okay. So um, he, he was actually a big fan of the games. He played them. And he was like, we're really good if they only can make a movie out of the games. Yeah, we're still waiting on the good ones. Oh, they're actually going to reboot the entire thing. For, oh, no. It's going to fall, It's going to be uh, plots that It's going to be like straight to TV or Amazon or something no, like that? It, it's going to be, the movies are going to follow the plot for the game. None of these movies have followed any plot from the game. I know, well, I, I never played any of the video games again. And Alice was not a character in any of the movies. And, I mean, uh, you mean game? Oh yeah, yeah, the game. Who's the main character in the game then? Uh, it, it, every series has got a different. Every game's got a different character. Oh, so if like you'll, you'll have a few that's got Chris, a few that's got Leon. Yeah, because I know who those people Someone's are. Someone's got Claire. Yeah, you remember Claire from the last one? Yeah. She, yeah, she's she's in a few of them. Oh. Of the game, she's who's the Claire? The the redheaded chick from the last, the the one we watched. I don't remember any of these people. The, the girl that helped her all the way during the entire movie. Oh, okay. The one that was fighting. Oh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the one other woman that didn't the, get the, killed? The one that was on the last three movies. That's Claire. I don't know. I haven't seen the any woman, other movies. The, the, other, the woman who didn't die. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's continue. Claire and her brother Chris. So it's, it's, so it, I mean, I enjoyed them. I like the games. I like some of the movies. And, I mean, the first one to me, you know, it, it kind of said, because that really... Do or not start off the whole zombie craze was the first movie for this. Think about it, 2002 mm -hmm. started zombie craze. But after that, you had Walking. No, no, not Walking. Uh, Day. No, oh, Dawn of the Dead. And the Zack Snyder one. Zack Snyder one. Dawn yeah. of the Dead. And, and after that, it was just psh, zombie explosion. Zombie explosion. And we got uh, Frank Darabont uh, got the Walking Dead on television. And yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was, it's it, kind of dying down now. Yeah. I mean, George that, Romero's made some really bad ones recently. He used to be so great, and then. Um, 
kind of like the Land ones of now. The dead. He's like, oh, you know, I can shoot things with my webcam. Land Let's of the shoot dead. the whole movie on the webcam. Oh, Land cheap. Of the dead. You mean we don't actually have to go there? We can get it on the green screen. We can put anything behind there on the green screen. Oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> oh, let's just shoot everything on the green screen. Wait, he's like 80, 80 something, isn't he? I, I don't know. But but yeah, well, I know there's one movie where he's like, oh, we can make a movie about the internet. And it was like, oh, about zombies on the internet. Oh, it's so stupid. But the game, I mean, uh, the movie, oh, gosh. Hey, you got me mixed up on that. The okay, movie. Continue. Well, I mean, I enjoyed it. I like the fighting. The fighting scene. He had, had a lot of, had a lot of the fighting scenes into it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if you play the game, it's just like stabbing and shooting and stabbing and shooting. That's so basically brought, what the movies are. So, you know, Millie Jones has actually got like a black belt on multiple martial arts. So a lot of the stunts she did, she did everything herself. Everybody in the movie did all their own stunts except for the wire work. Really? Yeah, they did all the stuff except for the wire work. I can see that. And they, they said uh, you, you, you played the zombie, and, and the, you had to go to a camp, and they would train you how to be a zombie oh. for, to be in the movie. It's like, it's like a class you had to take. It's like they put thought into this movie. Very, a lot of thought into this movie, a lot of money. And the movie how, mu- ca- how much was the budget? Do you know? It's like fifty million. Fifty. That was pretty sizable yeah, back then. Yeah, 50, I mean, 50. That's considered low now. And um, it didn't do as well in the theater. And then uh, that around this time was when DVDs hit real big. Yeah. And this movie like made probably quarter of a million dollars in DVD sales. I would love to hear the commentary on this movie and like all the other Resident Evil movies just to see what their thought process. Oh was. no, the, the commentaries are really funny. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do they know that's bad or like? No, the, uh, you only hear a commentary from Mila Jovovich and somebody else. And uh, she's really fun. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had that soda down there, but yeah, she's really funny. She's actually a really funny person. Oh yeah, yeah. The commentary is it, the, sec, the, the commentary in the sec was even funnier. It's got Odin Fear and her, and it's got uh, oh, what's her name? The one who played Jill in it. Yeah, Jill's another character from the game. I know who Jill is. No, you don't know Jill. No, I don't. Well, I would say I give this movie probably like a six out of ten. Six out of ten. Five point, solid. Five point eight out of ten. Six out of ten. Of course, just six. solid. Solid movie. I don't know. I have to rewatch it. Maybe I'll come back next week and uh, after rewatching it and tell you what it is. But one thing before we uh, move on, um, I heard someone say that you could take Mila Djokovic. I think this was Red Letter Media. Well, you keep saying this. Djokovic. Uh, Djokovic. 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 Well, uh, how about Mila W. S. Anderson? How about that? Mila Anderson. Okay. Well, Mila, the mo- girl from the movie, girl played Alice. Yes. yes. Um, so you could take her face. She has a very like dead face mm-hmm. in the whole movie, you could take any one of the shots of her face and put it in any of the other scenes. You wouldn't know which scene it's from because it looks exactly the same. Really? Yeah. Try that. Try that when you get home. I don't know. You try that when you get home too. I really don't understand know. it, but I'll look at it anyway. No, but guys, that's our show for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Again, if you have anything to share with us, anything uh, comments about the show, do you think the show was good? Please contact us. Uh, you know, tell us BBR request at nashc.edu. Uh, we want to thank all you guys that were lo- watching live on Facebook, watching live on Thanks. YouTube, <laughs> watching um, watching live on a uh, on the campus TVs, any uh, or listening on the radio. Um, yeah. Please let us know if you're listening and tell us what you want to know. Um, again, BBR yeah. request at nashuc.edu. And thank you, Home Box Office. Studio. Home Box Office. Okay, so this next a- week HBO production. Uh. HBO, uh, not not this one. This is not no uh. no. But uh, next week. Uh, we're going to be talking about some cool news topics, maybe have a little bit of a cool segment. Who knows? You might see one of us around campus with a microphone. might wonder, who's that sweaty guy? It's one of us. But um, Probably going to be wearing the same gray sweatpants and probably same jacket next week. Unless um, it gets warm. And what's the movie we're going to be seeing next week, Tyler? Uh, I think it's going to be The Rings. I think it's just called Rings. Oh, Rings. The Rings sounds like a hipster band. The ring, yeah, it does. The ring, the rings, the ring. They record their music on foot by the foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna end it like that. Okay. So next week, again, let us know what you want us to talk oh, about. We're gonna be seeing rings. Oh, right, oh guys, my gosh, you. that my was name, good. My name is. Oh, uh, was good. My name is Isaac Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gotta uh, tell them everybody you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm name. just Tyler. And All right, guys, stay classy, San Diego. Thank you so much. Uh, stay lovely. Uh, uh.